So we left you in the last video leaving Clonakilty where we had a fantastic day. We have fallen in love with this place, it's beautiful. So this episode, like many others in our Irish series, is where we get to the part of the day where we need to search for a place to stay for the night. So in this video, we eventually find what we thought was a great spot. Stu finally gets close to wildlife and actually takes some better shots. Ireland, as always, delivers us two seasons in one day. And then unfortunately, things take an unexpected turn. I think we move because they might come back. Welcome to Getaway Geese. We are Stu and Jane, and with Harry, our Ford Custom Auto Camper, we share our adventures. So join us in this Our Rough Guide series to campervanning in Ireland. Whilst we always knew we would be faced with hurdles in our version of fan life, fate as ever plays its part, so you never know when a low moment is about to come along. The next 48 hours that we're going to share builds up to the first low moment in what has been an amazing trip. We first head towards Galley Head as Stu has targeted a park for night spot. In the distance across the coastline we could see a large fire. We hope everyone is safe and despite looking in the local press for a few days after we didn't find out the reason. Unfortunately, a couple of other vans were in the prime spots and we felt too close to the road. It also looks like access to the lighthouse we wanted to see is difficult with these private signs on display. It's a shame, so after a few photos, we're on our way. Stu finds another target park up on Park for Night near Ross Carby down by the pier. Recent feedback seems to be okay, although there's a few comments about noise at times. But we're out of season, so we decide to give it a go for the night. Turn left now. The approach follows the tidal estuary, and it's a dead end road ending at the pier, and it's a really beautiful spot. We watched the end of the day activities in the sun of people playing in the sea on the opposite beach. This father teaching his kids how to fish was really sweet. And I actually thought about seeing if he could teach Stu some of his tricks. Our parking spot is tucked up against the rocks and the pier wall and we feel safe against the elements. The following morning the weather has changed with driving rain being the order of the day by the looks of it. So we start off with a slow van day, with a cuppa to get us going and boiled eggs for stew and we watch a bit of catch-up TV on the iPad. Slack tide, that's what Jane's learned. Slack tide is the hour before and hour after. We love watching the weather no matter what it is, but when it's like this, it's always nice and cosy in Harry. The man and his son who stayed in a motorhome decided to get soaked fishing. It's absolutely pouring down out there. I'm a fair weather fisherman. Yeah, I've got a cup of tea in my pyjamas, in the warmth. Enjoying the fishing. Enjoying remotely. the fishing. I'm really enjoying this fishing. I'm going out. Well, the rain stopped. It's windy as heck. You might not be able to hear me too well. It's a great park up. There's about six fishermen down here. They must have caught about 20, 24 mackerel last night. The tide's just turning. So we were going to move on, but I don't know. I might just hunker down here and so we're just coming to the end of the third week, going into our fourth week. It, it doesn't feel like the last trip. Uh, it, time's just gone. It doesn't. Doesn't. It feels effortless, to be honest. What's not to like being out, even if it's not sunny. 
and like we've done a few times on this trip, we play Guess Where the Bird Surfaces game. Ireland has the ability, even more than the UK, to have more than one season in a day and decides to deliver the summer season in the afternoon. So we have a walk in a bit of fresh air and we simply walk back up the road we drove in on, leaving Harry all safe and secure and in sight. We're presented with an array of bird life that are making the most of the low tide and for once they're relatively easy to film. cut the walk short before returning to Harry, but we'll get to the reason for that shortly. A local swimmer then appears, who spends no time in just getting out of his car and going down the pier steps and straight into the water. And he is off swimming, but not just around the pier, he's going right across the bay. Now it's obvious that he's an accomplished swimmer, but with various signs, I can't help being concerned, so I keep an eye on him the whole time. The rest of the day, we simply chill out and enjoy the view. Stu sat here thinking about putting the rug over him. <laughs> and the man's just walked in the sea. relaxed and happy and after making tea we eventually go to sleep around 9.30 in the knowledge that Ireland has once again delivered us a set of memories in a stunning location. However what you'll see next is a fast forward of time to the following morning after a turn of events in the night that momentarily throws us off guard and challenges us. In the main anything that was recorded was done on my iPhone which I picked up immediately when the situation started initially to use the Torch app on the phone, but I then carried on recording as events unfolded. So apologies for the quality, but it was obviously not a planned activity. Good morning. We've uh, woken up in a slightly different place to where we went to sleep last night, which was over there about uh, for two or three miles, to be honest. Um, we wanted to make this video now, only so we could get out of the way and put it behind us actually more than anything else yeah, and uh, get on with uh, get on with the holiday get and, on with our life yeah and <laughs> get on with our life yeah um and also i think it's fair to say what we're about to say has got nothing to do with the area um if we just happen to be here in a place so it's not it's not not specific to the area i think so um going back last night but uh well we've been at uh, ross carby pier uh, originally we was going to stay for one day and one night um but the weather closed in and we didn't feel like moving did we really? no we decided to stop where yeah. we were didn't it was we? really nice and then the weather as ever in ireland changes within hours <laughs> suddenly you go from uh, a blowing gale and a storm coming through to blue sky um we woke up this morning to the storm um so we stayed uh, actually an extra day because it was such a nice place and just chilled out really um and we went for um, a walk and, and all of that so but last night we uh, went to bed um, early, having had a 
game of uh, Rummy Cub that Jane once again has thrashed me in, which I seems to be losing the series so far. Um, we went to bed, I don't know, nine, half past nine probably by the time we got into bed. Um, fell asleep and I think it was about 11. Yeah, it was. Now, I, I, I didn't wake up. You, you heard something, didn't you? I heard, it was so windy, I heard a car. And by the way, before Jane goes on, is that this is pitch black on our own. I think that's a key, key yeah, thing. There's right nobody else the there. Right at the end. We're on our own. We're at the end of a, a, a long, really long road. road. They've got middle some. of nowhere. We're on our own. Yeah, Go and on. we heard. Um, I heard sort of a car in the wind, but I sort of didn't think any more about it. And then I, I was sort of half asleep, and I thought, God, I can hear voices. And the next minute, there was an almighty bang on the back of the van where my head was. Um, and yeah, so. And I think I, th I think when you, I must have somehow in that I I heard something or heard you stirring because I woke up just at the time where I could hear a voice outside, a car, and then there was this m massive what felt like a huge bang hitting the van. It felt like something big had hit the, the van. van. Yeah, like, you know, it, it felt bigger than yeah. ultimately what it was, but yeah. it, it felt bigger. Um, obviously, we knew people were outside at that point. Um, as ever, when you're coming out of sleep, I'm trying to work out what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I put the light on, I put the white light on, only because I, that I felt that was the right thing to do, because I wanted them to know that there was somebody in this van. I think they knew that anyway, to be honest. But I, I just wanted to make sure that we, they knew we were up. Um, with that, you could hear them scampering away, getting in the car. By the time I'd unlocked, the, the, obviously the car was locked, the van was locked, I'd opened the side door. Um, I heard the, the, van, the car skidding away. I don't think I'd have got out if I knew they were still out there, because that's probably the wrong thing to do, is to go out and confront. Chucked an egg at the van. Little shits. They must have known we were here. You don't just happen to drive down here. I reckon it was those three kids. Little shits. What do you want to do? I don't know. You don't answer. Do you want to sort of that? Well, we're not going to let us let it get to us. I'm not going to sleep much tonight, though, are we? No. Do you think we should move on? I went out because I, I think I knew they were driving away. Mm. But it's all in a split second, these things happen, so you're not quite sure what, what decisions you're making. Um, um, so I'm on going out in bare feet, in my pyjamas. I know, pajamas. you went out in bare Kung feet. Kung Fu style. <laughs> well, in my head. Yeah, like, no. In my dream. Um, then, then I could see a, a break, the, uh, the lights of the car you know, in the distance. Oh, uh, really? Going well, really fast. Yeah. yeah, brave. Um, we were wondering what the hell's going on. I'm obviously concerned that Harry's damaged in some way. Uh, so I take my iPhone light, because that's the only torch I can grab hold of at the time which is probably something else we probably ought to consider a, a, a torch we can get hold of quickly, a bright torch. Um, I go around the van a couple of times actually, couldn't see anything obvious and then I saw on the uh, back light here, the uh, um, I could see an egg coming Hello. down. I've uh, thrown an egg by the looks of it at the van. Don't think it's damaged. So he's, they'd obviously it thrown. It really made a very loud. In fact, I don't know whether they pushed the van because the van moved. I think they were quite it, close it to it. It wasn't yeah. through an egg. So oh, I don't know whether they pushed the on. van or... But it was a large egg, it wasn't a medium egg, it was a large egg, I reckon. So, <laughs> it's anyway. amazing what sound an egg <laughs> can Because there was make. a lot of yolk coming down the right side, which I've got to wipe and that. And, uh, and I could see, that I could see the shell on the, on the floor as well. So I knew I knew what it was. Now, whether or even throwing an egg, you don't know whether it's going to dent or whatever, because they, they could be quite strong uh, eggs. Are. Um, but the, uh, at that point in time, we then got back in the van. We didn't, weren't panicking, but we, we had to make a decision. 
you know, do we stay or do we go? So, well, they might come back. So, I don't think we'll sleep if we don't move. No, we but then what if they? Have, we're gonna have to move stuff. What if they follow us? They won't follow us. We'll keep. We'll just watch. It could have been worse than an egg. Well, they might have damaged it. It's difficult to say. I don't think an egg is like that. It's smashed more. It? Well, it made a hell of a sound for an egg. Didn't it? Yeah. I mean, did you hear anything? I mean, I saw... No, it... I heard voices. And then, I heard and the car and drive up, but I was half asleep. Um, I think we move because they might come back. Yeah. I think we move. So, so, to do this, we leave the bed where it is. So let's just go all the bed that way. Okay. Which isn't it? Is that too no, much? Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know where I'm going first. Right. Okay, yep. so we've decided to move. Right, little wrongly. I don't think they'll come back, but we just don't know. I don't want to risk it, we won't sleep anyway, so we're just going to move. It was really stressful turning around on the pier in the pitch black night with the front and rear sensors going off. There's a ballard down there. We went. <laughs> we went. We thought. I, th I think the thing is, if we'd have stayed, there was always a concern would they come back. I think it's highly unlikely because they were down a big long road with nowhere to go. Yeah. They would have been trapped if the guard had come out and all that. So I think they they were getting out you know, because they would have been trapped otherwise. And it was definitely targeted without a doubt because, well, yeah. <laughs> like any mothers there that have got one egg missing this morning, that's because your son was out chucking yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, why night. why would you uh, go around in your um, you know your hot rod car or whatever? with a dozen half dozen eggs we, we did, <laughs> you just wouldn't, wouldn't we did have two what we would consider sort of boy racer yeah. types i don't like to, the to, day, to yeah. stereotype people yeah. but one we actually came back from our walk because we were so far up the road and they went whizzing past us and very we fast down this lane we felt uncomfortable didn't yeah we? we did feel uncomfortable so we walked back to check the van She's gone back to the van because we saw a car of young lads come down. And we know we're being ridiculous. All they're doing is looking out to the sea, but... Yeah. Um, and weirdly, they tied a face mask at the end of the, the pier. They were just pier. doing some random things, you know. And I th I'm fairly sure they had a, sp a spliff. Um, anyway, I mean, we can't say it was them, um, but, it, you know, the bottom line is you don't go down a pier with an egg we do feel targeted there. no young weather's because they're just motorhomes i don't know whether they're just out there for a fr they're out there maybe for a it's friday just how night. they get their friday they night kick kicks. kicks which is a bit um, weird for you know boy racers with it, eggs <laughs> yeah you did feel threatened at that moment in time yeah, you when felt you don't know what's happening um, and your van exposed. shakes yeah they, they definitely must have yeah. pushed the van i think yeah um, that wasn't just an egg going in it. So anyway, we decided to move. We drove, got in the van. We also had to sort ourselves out with the van. The van got into a bit of a mess because obviously we were turning things around and getting ourselves out of there. Um, we drove back along the lane, back to um, Ross Carberry um, main uh, village area. I actually drove around just to see if we could see him because I was going to we stare were... at him if I could see any anyone who was looking suspicious. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to do, to be well, honest. Well, I think it was more a fact, were they going to follow us and see us pull up and do it again? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's how you, 
you feel a bit we, threatened. Yeah, you but... start to get you start to overthink things and that. So anyway, we ended up coming just around the coast to a, just a, a, a park yeah. up. It took us ages, as you can imagine, getting back to sleep. We ended up having something to eat. We ended up talking. I Eventually, had, a, I had an it. emergency pack of crisps. That's how bad it was. <laughs> I, had I don't chocolate eat crisps. And a pack of crisps. <laughs> um, and then we eventually went to. We actually both fell asleep, but we, but I, you know, I got up early thinking about it. Um, and we have, you know, when we bought Harry, we always said no matter what security um, you put on, and we put, you know, quite a bit of layers of security in the van. It doesn't stop somebody coming up to the van and doing something. Doesn't stop somebody, you know, denting the van. Doesn't stop somebody smashing the window. You can't yeah, stop that. Yeah, we've always said that yeah, we've got to happen. prepare that one day it will yeah. happen. So on the scale of what could have happened, this is right yeah. down the bottom. I mean, an egg, you know, it's not... Uh, the worst thing it could have been is that they could have thrown a rock. A, that could have That's been dangerous. Like. <laughs> um, and but B, yeah. would have damaged Harry, which would have upset us even more. Yeah. Um, so I was sort of grateful it was yeah, just so an thanks, egg in a way. Thanks for just chucking an, an egg. egg and not a rock. That's um, all I can say. So here. anyway, we've... we've We've talked it through. Um, it's not going to stop what we're doing. Uh, it's not going to stop us um, moving on. Because you do question it, don't you? Mm -hmm. Like safety. Whether you should be stopping on campsites, mm -hmm. but you know, if we weren't, we're not in anybody's way. We're a little van. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and it can happen in the daylight. It could happen yeah. anywhere. In, in fairness, so anyway, we thought we'd tell you. Um, that's the story. Um, we're just going to move on. We're uh, we've had a. We've had our, our breakfast this morning. There's a couple of other points that we discussed during the day that we also feel are relevant and we wish to share with you. We forgot to say in the video that we, we did report it to the police because, you know. Yeah, I just, um, I wasn't going to phone them because there was nothing they could do because we didn't know registrations, not seen any positive identification, but um, uh, you know, I went onto the website, you can actually mail them. About, and I just wanted to report it more, the fact just in case they've had other incidents and they needed to got do more about it. Egg so, throw yeah, throw yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that they could have deal with. So we've just, um, I've just met a lady in a shop as you do, um, and she actually lives at the harbour. And I was just telling her about the egg getting thrown at the van, and uh, apparently that's what the kids do. Uh, they did it to a local couple that had bought a camper van and went to stop down there for the night, and. Uh, but they knew who the kids were, so they got reported in that instance. So it's obviously how they get the kicks. So it's sort of nice to know. We, we knew it wasn't targeted at us, but it's always sort of nice just to have that confirmation. So in summary, we know it could have been a lot worse with the rocks instead of eggs. Although, as we said at the time, that's what we initially thought had happened. And at that moment in time, whether it's rocks or eggs, you feel the same emotion of fright and anger while you're trying to make sense of what's happened. Looking back now, we're more aware of three phases we go through when an event occurs. First, you react to the situation and raw emotion and adrenaline takes over. You then move on to the rationalization phase where emotion starts to reduce and you get a more balanced view. Finally, you need to then move on and the quicker you can get to this phase, I guess the better. Thankfully, we got straight back into the wild or off-grid park-ups following this as we felt that was important. So what did we learn from this? Well, maybe we should have moved on when we saw the lads drive down. But in our heads, we dealt with that at the time and it could well be it was completely unconnected. And also, you can't run every time you see a car full of young lads. We also think maybe the park for night older reviews around noise was a sign but it was three years old and it was only a noise issue. Plus, we'd stayed one night before and really felt comfortable. Unfortunately, we can't get on the app to update a comment at the moment, so if anyone can, we'd be grateful. So we'll leave it there, having now dealt with the issue. And we've compartmentalised it in our own heads. We know that we'll probably face other situations as we travel round, that may challenge us and may even be worse but we're determined that a minority event will not stop our van life. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode where we carry on undeterred travelling west in this fantastic country of Ireland. So thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video then help us grow the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. And we'll hopefully see you in the next episode of Our Travels in Harry.